Hi, this is the President of Space. I am coming to you live from my headquarters on Europa, near Jupiter. Um, and today I wanted to talk about to talk to you about uh, the biggest little game I ever made, uh, which is Shards of Destiny. I'm immensely proud of this game because uh, I finished it, and you cannot say as much about most of my games, uh, although I have some. Mm, I worked on it, well first of all the first version came out for a game jam, I believe it was a weekly game jam, um, and the theme was Mirrors, uh, and th this game is very very loosely based on that theme, uh, basically you have a mirror which is a MacGuffin that you have to kind of find and bring somewhere. Um, but the, you know, the, the version for the game jam was barely, barely any game, <laughs> I mean uh, I, I it was only a week, so I worked on it mostly in the mornings and in the evenings if I had uh, time to spare because you know I have a small child and if any of you have small children you can you you know that um, making games with small children is like you know in the dev the hard mode um, but um, well then after the jam I worked on it for a couple of weeks more and uh, I added some features as Pico8 allows um, and here it is the final version mm, and I figured pff, if you know big guys can make videos about their games then why can't the little guys who work by day as front-end developers and write JavaScript and by night eh, they turn into prisoners of space okay um, let's begin why not? Okay, override. Okay, so the first thing that comes to your mind w when seeing this is probably um, this is an, a ripoff of, of early Ultimas. And you would be right and wrong at the same time. Well, I mean, it looks and feels kind of like, you know, Ultima 1, but. Um, it is mostly due to the fact that it is top-down view, and uh, you are a hero with a sword who was is going around, and probably there are monsters to fight and stuff. But really, this game was inspired by games that I played as a child on my Commodore 64. Uh, I mostly liked shooters and beat 'em ups and stuff, but uh, there were some games that I had no idea what to do with them, but I enjoyed very much the atmosphere and the how they felt and the sense of you know being lost in adventure uh, I'm talking about the games such as Fire Lord uh, and the Starquake some some of those are uh, ports from ZX Spectrum games um, you can see this in the uh, style of graphics here which is um, you know one not, not strictly one bit but each sprite is only two colors black and whatever color I felt was appropriate uh, otherwise this game is very simple you have the status screen but you have no inventory to speak of I mean you collect items but they are more like more like uh, you know uh, point-and-click adventure items you have to find something to get somewhere and they use something somewhere you know uh, and the equipment you find um, automatically kind of appears in your inventory if, if it is better than what you have already so essentially the, there is no inventory management for to speak of but the, but the game is, is pretty short so that's you know that's not a big deal okay so let us basically the instruction says you bump into things to to interact so let's bump into a few things <laughs> to see this guy looks important okay long ago demons were trapped in a magical mirror and sealed by the gods the mirror was entrusted to the kings of men for safekeeping but it has been stolen okay so obviously we have to find a mirror and my brother loved that there were not just kings but kings of men I mean it, it sounds it already sounds more legit Okay, find the mirror, mirror pieces and restore peace to the kingdom. The mirror has been shattered into three shards, you must find them. Okay. 
It is said that the hero of the land shall seek out magical artifacts from the dawn of time and use them in the quest to defeat a great evil. Is it a legend or could it be? We don't know who stole and shattered the mirror, but it must have been a sorcerer of considerable power and of great evil. Okay, so right away you can see that you know there are no names, no specific terms. No, th this this land has no name, you have no name, the, this is the king, these are his guards, you know, this is all very vague. And I kind of wanted it to be that way. I mean, the hero has no characteristics so that you can easily identify with him or her, whoever you are. Um, and all those people you know, uh, have no names and, and uh, everything is very vague so that you can use your imagination kind of to fill fill in all those gaps and I wanted you to feel, feel this sense of um, I don't know mm -hmm. kind of being lost or being or not being sure what everything is you know, kind of like the feeling I had when I played those games as a kid and I had no idea what to do or where to go Ha, by the way, this game has no no map, obviously. So so as to reinforce that kind of feeling. Okay, return to me to record your deeds in the Royal Chronicle. Game saved, yeah. So this is your save point. One and only. You go here to save your game, period. And now the demons have fled the mirror, they roam the land freely. Yeah, exposition, exposition. There is a healer in the eastern village, but he will ask for gold to pay for the herbs he needs to perform his arts. Okay, great. The sage in the village to the east is very wise. She may be able to aid you on your journey. Okay, so it seems we have a quest. Obviously, we have no quest log. But I think it's not very hard to remember that we have to go to the eastern village to find a sage. Talk to everyone you meet. You never know what insight they may bring into your quest. Okay. Well, this is, seems to be the only way out, so let's go. And we see our first monster. It's a spider. It's kind of a tough monster for a start, so let's maybe try to dodge him if possible. Or maybe. Well, let's fight him. Well, basically, this is this is all there is to the combat in this game. You just bump into things to attack them, and based on your power and defense, uh, you deal damage and receive damage. Uh, the power and defense are basically uh, depend on the equipment you have, and your health depends on your level. You get experience by killing monsters, and as you gain levels, you get more health, and as you find equipment, you get more powerful. That's that's how it is. Uh, I figure that you don't need more complicated combat than this because the game can be finished in about half an hour if you know what you're doing, and probably an hour or an hour and a half if you don't because it's not very hard. Um, so I figured it's enough. Okay, so here we are in the eastern village. Let's see what those people have to say. This old pickaxe, you can have it. Maybe it will aid you on your journey. Okay, so we heard the blip sound, mm -hmm. and we have our first item. It's a pickaxe. Mm -hmm. An old druid lives alone to the southeast of here. It is said he is the last keeper of a magic artifact. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have another quest. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. This must be the sage, so judging from the amount of text that has been dumped upon us. Okay. Three shards of the mirror were hidden in three dungeons by the mad sorcerer. In your quest you will need a lamp to guide you through your northern swamps, a bow to navigate the treacherous waters of the southern lake, and an elven cloak to protect you from the freezing winter of the icy mountains. Know also this. You cannot defeat the sorcerer by force, you must capture his essence from wherever it is kept. Okay, so it seems we cannot just beat the <coughs> out of the sorcerer. We must kind of find his phylactery or whatever, and then we'll be able to use the mirror somehow to capture his essence and free the land of the evil. Okay, this shield has been the pride of the, my family for generations. Please take it. May it aid you in your quest to mend the magic mirror. Okay, mm -hmm. hero's shield. Okay, and we can see our defense bump was bumped to two. 
It should certainly aid us in combat against monster. Oh, here is a sign. Eastern village. Yeah, so we're, we are in the right place. There is another village to the northwest of the castle, just south of the icy mountains. You might ask around there for clues as well. Okay, great. Let's do it. Let me heal your wounds. Okay. And all gold is zero. So this guy takes one gold for every hit point that he heals. And we had some gold from killing the spider, so he ha he healed some of our lost health. Beware the wasteland to the south. A mighty behemoth guards the bridge and the land is full of dangerous monsters, but there lies the lair of the mad sorcerer. Okay, so basically this game is open world. So you can pretty much go anywhere, except for a few areas that you need items to kind of uh, get in. And the, the final area is guarded by this very huge monster, um, which is very tough and very hard to beat. But uh, you can avoid him if you find certain a certain item later on in the game. But also you may want to fight him because he has uh, the best shield in the game, I believe. You travel around, you may find some old treasures buried or locked in chests. I heard of a magical ring that will heal the wounds and soothe the spirit of its bearer. But I do not know where it might be hidden. Okay, a magical ring. So, good to know. There is a stone circle to the north of here here, left by the ancients. It might be worth visiting. There is a ship right in the western village. Maybe you could ask him to make a boat for you. Okay, so you can see the continuation of the theme that uh, nobody has a name and every, you know, everything is called. Very generic names, so you can kind of place this land wherever you want. Okay, so we heard that the druid lives southeast. So let's find the druid. Okay, here's the druid. This lamp will ensure that you don't get lost in the deadly swamps of the north. Okay, so we have our first quest item, which is the lamp, and it should allow us to cross the swamps to the north, wherever it might be. So let's see what's to the north in here. Oh, a chest. Um, okay. You found a master sword. Great, our power was bumped to two. Now we can fight those monsters more easily. Okay. <coughs> went down. As you can see the, the AI is pretty dumb, but I deliberately made it so it will, it's like in the first Ultima. So, you know, you don't always need pathfinding. I mean, sometimes you can get away with enemies being pretty dumb. <laughs> and uh, I was taught this by a game called Lowlander on the iPhone, which had exactly the same AI and exactly the same fog of war, which we will see soon. So I figured, I mean, if he can charge money for a game that has these systems and it's pretty fun, then why not make a game like this? Okay, uh, we have 16 gold, let's heal ourselves. Uh, we gained a level, by the way, so now we have 20 health. Uh, okay. So now, um, I wonder if we should, if we should go and uh, to the swamp or just walk oh. around and find what else we can scavenge from the land just like that. Okay. We heard about the village to the northwest of the castle, so let's maybe find this, this place. Okay. Men cannot comprehend the magical powers that course through the land, but the ancients who wielded it once imbued a simple wand with terrible destructive power. Whatever the wand touched was struck as if by lightning. If you can find it, maybe you could use its power for good. Great. Some people don't want to live in the villages, and they settle in remote parts of the land. Great. Yes, I can build you a boat for a hundred gold pieces. Okay, so this is the ship, right? And we have 14 gold, so it's too little. Mm -hmm. If you mend the mirror, you might be able to trap the essence of the mad sorcerer in it. Legends say that the sorcerer is otherwise immortal, but who knows whether they are true. Mm -hmm. If you want to dig something up, you need a shovel. Look around, someone might have a spare one. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Let's go here. Oh, here's the lake. Okay, there, there's some, some patch of dirt 
that looks different, but we don't have a sho shovel, I mean. So, let's maybe see what can we do about it. Okay. We're on, on our way to third level. Let's save the game, since we are here. Great. And let's see what's up there. Okay, a guy. Can we walk on the snow? No. I can sell you this shovel for 50 gold pieces. Okay. 34. Too, too little. Okay. 43. Maybe I can buy the shovel. Oh my god. Okay, I gained a level. Great. Let's buy a shovel. Okay, we have a shovel. So now let's go to the lake again and see what's hidden there. Okay, so probably we can later on find a boat and then maybe we will be able to cross the lake. An elven sword, great. Our power jumped to three. Okay, I need I need healing. Let's go to the eastern village and heal ourselves. There are some stairs up down there. Maybe something hidden there. I have 44 gold, I can heal all my wounds. Great. Now let's see what's up there. Okay, I'm a, I made good progress in gaining my next level. Elven cloak. Okay, so the cloak, as we might remember, will allow allow us to survive the harsh winters of the icy mountains. Okay, and again the level. Great. Maybe we can go to the swamp now. I think with our current health, we should be good. Okay, here's the tablet, but more importantly, here's a broken fragment of a mountain. And it seems we can break the rock with a pickaxe. And it's the unpatched version. I fixed the music in the, in the final version. Oh well. Okay. Here's the chest. I found a life essence. Okay. And I found the mirror shard. Here it is in the bottom left corner. Ah, it's so bad about the music. I, I fixed this in the in the final version, but I must have forgotten to download the latest version from GitHub on this computer. Oh well. Everything else seems to be working fine and I'm, I got the shield of kings. Of men, obviously. Uh, and I have my defense bump to three. Okay, let's let's go to the eastern village and hear all the wounds, maybe. Okay, the monsters are following us, but no matter. We can beat them now. And the shield is doing its job. We're taking far less damage than, than usual. And let's now gather some gold to buy our boat. Okay. I'm pretty proud of the music in this game. I mean, I this this main theme came out kind of by accident. I I, I knew I was inspired about a children's songs for of all things, and uh, I had this this kind of first few bars in my head 
uh, then I fiddled around with the, with the the tracker in the in Pico 8, and uh, it somehow you know someone <laughs> came out of my fingers and then stayed this way, and it's I I really like it, and I also like the the dungeon theme. Okay, um, we have a boat. So what should we do now? Mm, we still we have the clock, the the lamp, and the boat and the pickaxe. Okay, I think we can go to find a little secret. It is now covered by a health bar, but if you look closely, this mountain here looks off, and it kind of is. So we can break it with a pickaxe, and then we can go here across this river and then dig up the moonsteel sword which is has the power of five I believe it is the most powerful sword in the game so now we should be wiping the floor with those monsters like it's nothing and I think uh, we should save the game Even though we have the life essence which will resurrect us uh, after we die in the castle with half our health. Let's... Let's not use it if we don't need it, okay? <laughs> um, I think we can gain a level before we run out of health, so maybe I'll go to the lake and try to find... Let's go for for a shield first. Oh, here's the guy. We dwarves usually don't go out of th through the surface, but I have been chosen to stand watch and bestow this finely crafted shield upon the hero who is questing to mend the magic mirror. Okay, so we have the dwarven shield now, and our defense is four. And let's let's kill this bat. Okay, and we we gain the level. And we found the true steel sword, but it's weaker than the moon steel sword, so... Let's go to the dungeon, flooded tunnels, okay. And... Here's the ancient wand. So, the wand works like this. When you uh, use it with the, the circle button, uh, basically you hit hit every square which is adjacent to you very 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 hard and then it has to recharge for a couple of steps found a mirror shard okay so we have two um, it is very useful in the final dungeon and now okay we have only two items missing the final mirror shard and the ring Okay. As you can see, I designed all those very rudimentary quests at around the number three, <laughs> partially because the Ultima 4 was designed about the number eight, and I wanted to everything come in a specific number as well, and three because, well, <laughs> it's not a reference to the Holy Hand Grenade, although now that I think of it I might start telling people that it is, uh, but it is actually due to the <laughs> limitation of the Pico 8. The map, as you can see, is very small and very, uh, but is very packed with features. I mean, with, with landmarks and stuff to find. Um, and three is practically everything I could fit of everything in here. Okay, uh, we have healed ourselves. We uh, let's go to the final dungeon, shall we? Okay, the final dungeon, is, as the sage said, is in the icy mountains. So, uh, the enemies in the game are basically only differ in speed and strength, meaning how, how hard they hit. Uh, but the game is over so quickly that you don't even notice. The, uh, the dark enemies are the as you can imagine, stronger versions of... Oh, I found the Ring of Wizards. The stronger versions of normal en enemies. 
Uh, I used up all the spreadsheet available in the game, so I had to kind of... Oh, the ring is healing me, healing me right now. I had to, you know, <laughs> do a palette swap of the existing <laughs> existing sprites to have more powerful enemies. So, oh, let's not fight these giants, they are quite strong. I'm level 5 and I have... well, maybe let's fight one of those. Okay, and we gained a level, great. So, I'm level 6, I have the Moonsteel Sword and a Dwarven Shield, and I have the Mirror, which is now whole, because I found 3 shards in 3 dungeons. So let's now save our game, so we don't lose our progress, and then I think we should go... Uh, to find the best shield in the game. Okay, game saved. And the guard said that we should be aware of the wise wasteland to the south, so south is probably where we need to go. Basic enemies basically spawn randomly on the borders of each screen, and each screen has a different probability of spawning enemies. Um, so it's basically everything very, very simple. Okay, here is a road. Let's find out where it leads. And here's the behemoth. Okay, so you see that he blocks the path. So basically w early on in the game you cannot cross this because he's too powerful but n now you know you have the boat you can bypass him entirely but if you kill him the mighty behemoth falls and among its many stolen possessions you find the ancient seal shield of giants oh, great what? we have shield of giants which uh, gives oh. us five defense and I think we can go straight away to the final dungeon why not Let's avoid this, these monsters and go to the lair of the mm. Mad Sorcerer. And I have a separate theme for this dungeon, which is very short. Finally, you face the Mad Sorcerer himself. His evil presence makes you nauseous, but you feel the Mirror of Destiny resonate with the forgotten magic of the ancients. The Sorcerer steps forward and hesitates just for a split second, but this gives you confidence in your ability to defeat him once and for all. Great. Uh, you would get another uh, text if you didn't have the Mirror, but since we have the Mirror... Okay, here's the wand in action. Here's the Sorcerer. Whatever you do, don't kill him, because you will lose. <laughs> okay. What just happened? Okay. We were over overwhelmed by monsters. And the wand, uh, the, the essence resurrected us in the in the castle. I wonder if we should gain another, another level before going back. Uh, but I think we should just you know, get healed and go back. Let's see what what happens. Uh, the one is back, so okay. Um, I wonder if I should save the game. Ah, let's be br adventurous. Let's not save the game. I mean, I saved before the our last venture, so. Should be fine. Well, oh. but the essence was, is already uh, already back at. I I may have. I may have placed too many monsters in here. This didn't happen to me. <laughs> N this never happened to me, so it had to happen when I'm recording the video. You know what? Let's cheat a little. Let's run the game again, and let's restore the saved game. It's basically where we left, but all the items are restored, and 
<laughs> and all the monsters are gone from the lair. So let's try in the next one, next time, uh, uh, pfft, another time. Okay, let's go take the road this time. Uh, okay. Yeah, th all the monsters are restored due to, and everything pretty much, because uh, in the POH you have to limit its space to save your game, so... I had to be picky, just like, you know, in the days of yore. Okay, now we're good. Okay. As the mad sorcerer falls, you catch his escaping essence inside the mirror of destiny. The mirror vibrates with the incredible power trapped within. The land is once again free of demonic presence and you can go back home a hero, dedicated to the memory of Ben Daglish, whose incredible C64 tunes inspired dreams of fantasy and adventure in the ten-year-old me. Thank you for playing. You might have noticed that the, the music for the ending was uh, pretty much a ripoff or a variation upon the theme from Fire Lord, which is indeed by Ben Daglish. And which was very important to me when I was a kid. Uh, so, thank you for coming to this short adventure with me. And I will see you again in one game from now, probably. See ya.